Today on this episode of The Brain Surgeon's Take, we will be discussing the 10 best ways to eat healthy with world-recognized nutritionist and owner-CEO of AR Nutrition, Adam Ross. Find out 10 simple yet powerful dietary habits that can make a major positive impact on your overall health and wellness. Much more on this podcast episode. Welcome back, everyone. Excited to talk to Adam Ross today, one of the world's leading names in nutrition, talking about ways to eat healthy. Let's pull him in. You know, it's a pleasure having you on. I'm going to do a brief introduction just just to kind of let everyone know who you are, and then we'll jump into the questions. So Amazing. Yeah, we are, we are ecstatic to have Adam Ross today. As I said, he's one of the world's leading names in nutrition. He is owner and CEO of AR Nutrition. Adam holds a bachelor's degree in nutrition uh, and dietetics from Queens College, as well as a BA in communications from Merrimack, where he was a star Division I hockey player. Adam is certified by the International Society of Sports Nutrition and brings a, a strong background in meal planning and performance nutrition counseling. His general experience has done counseling, including allergy and intolerance, uh, dietary restrictions, health concerns, personal preferences, and eating disorders. Here today to discuss the very important topic of what are 10 simple ways that we can eat healthy. So Adam, welcome. We are ecstatic to have you on here. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Komatar. I appreciate it. I appreciate the intro. That was very nice. I, I don't know about if I was ever a star uh division one <laughs> hockey player but i tried hard so and that's what led me to nutrition interestingly enough so no i appreciate uh appreciate you having me in here today and it, it is uh pleasure's all mine well let's just jump right into it, it you know people want to know what are healthy foods to eat if you could list the top 10 healthiest foods to eat what would those be Absolutely. Yeah, this is a loaded question. You know, there's so many, so many great foods out here uh, available for everybody. And and I do want to say that variety, I think is something that's so important that people need to understand. Because of the, you know, the, the nutrient variety that you can get from eating a variety of food, obviously, I think a lot of times we get caught up in kind of the everyday routine, we eat the same foods on repeat. And we really can miss a lot of like essential nutrients, a lot of essential vitamins, essential minerals and stuff from our diet just because we don't have um, a lot of variety. So, yeah, so I would say, number one, I'm going to start with uh, red meat. Um, honestly, red meat is just a really good high quality uh, protein source. It's packed with bioavailable iron. And I think that's very important, obviously, to have blood flowing around the body and have the energy and, and vitamin B12, right? So, you know, if, if energy issues are a problem, I think red meat is a great place to start so that you get the bioavailable iron and you get all the B12. Um, sir, go ahead. Let me just stop you right there and ask any concerns with heart disease, atherosclerosis, cholesterol levels? Yes. Yeah. So I should have, uh, I, I guess I should have clarified too that uh, essentially lean red meat. Okay. So... The, the one place I think where the jury is still out is on the saturated fat intake from animal based uh, proteins, right? And that is one thing that I do pay a lot of attention to. So absolutely, you're going to want to do um, as lean of a red meat as possible. So I don't recommend a lot of obviously like fatty steaks and things like that. Um, the the sources that I, I prefer to get my red meat from are like a 96 uh, percent um, fat free ground beef. I do a lot of bison, things that are a little bit leaner um, so that I can avoid that saturated fat intake and just get all of the benefits of the the quality proteins that you're going to want to take in there. Got you. Okay. And then keep going down your list about other foods that you... Absolutely. Would. Yeah. Salmon will be number two, right? Um, obviously getting some, you know, you being a brain surgeon, you know all about your omega-3s, right? And how important those are for the brain and uh, for reducing inflammation and promoting cardiovascular health and all these great things, right? Um, it's also a pretty solid source of vitamin D, which is not always easy to uh, get through your nutrition unless you're doing fortified uh, dairies and things like that, right? So um, salmon would definitely be uh, my number two. Uh, and I'm gonna, I'm kind of starting with proteins here, right? Going down the line. Cause I do think protein is, is the thing that is probably most impactful, uh, in people's diets. And I think it, it's, it's a little bit misunderstood the actual amount of protein that people need to be consuming, um, and all the variety of benefits that we can get from it, right. In terms of just the, yeah, the vitamins, the minerals, the nutrients, right. So, uh, number three, I've just got like uh, white fish and, uh, just lean white meat proteins, right. So again, just uh, honestly, pretty low calorie, right? So I'm big on um, trying to create as much volume within our diet as possible. So 
I really like to rely on high volume foods. And to me, lean proteins are a very high volume food, right? At only four calories per gram. Um, and if anybody's ever sat down and tried to eat six to eight ounces of a lean protein, it's not the easiest thing to do. There's a lot of satiety uh, involved in that, right? And then there's also a lot of really good nutrition. So I do like uh, white meat fish, white meat, uh, you know, chicken, turkey, things like that. Um, just good, low calorie, high volume food, and also a really good source of uh, B12 vitamins as well. Um, and then the last protein that I want to touch on there, which would, I guess, be number, uh, number four here is um, eggs. All right, so eggs are one of those things that are, again, have taken a bit of a beating, you know, in terms of, you know, cholesterol, should we eat them, you know, are eggs, is eating eggs the same as smoking a cigarette, you know, all these different things. Um, I, I am a believer that eggs are, are just a really high bioavailable protein. And within the yolks, um, there's a lot of benefits, right? So we're going to get a lot of fat soluble vitamins. And we're also going to get choline. Um, and choline is, again, one of those uh, nutrients that's essential for brain function, right? Um, so eggs is the best source of choline. So that's why I'm putting eggs up there in the mix as well as just, you know, again, choline is important. You're getting a, a variety of uh, your fat soluble vitamins as, as well as B vitamins. And again, it's a, a very bioavailable, high, uh, easy to digest, you know, source of protein for the body. So yeah, I mean, cool. I gotta say, I'm glad you, I'm glad you said that. Cause I literally have like 10 to 15 eggs a week. So I'm glad you said that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No. And, and that's the thing, right. And it's like, it's kind of crazy there. You could, I mean, I could kind of go off, I, I'll try to keep it on track here, but you know, with the choline being so important for the brain and obviously the brain's function and signaling, I think that's one of the massive benefits, but then also too, right? Like a lot of people will want to do only the whites or something. And even if we're looking from, you know, I deal with a lot of like body composite, you know, people that are looking to improve body composition, improve muscle mass. And I think, when we're just talking about general health, uh, you know, metabolic health, people's resiliency to being sick, or if, you know, God forbid, they do end up in the hospital, or they end up with anything serious. Um, muscle mass is one of those things, it's really a, a, a life preserver for a lot of us, right? Um, so believe it or not, you know, even uh, when they've tested, you know, people getting the same amount of protein from a whole egg versus an egg white, um, the people that were receiving the whole eggs were actually uh, increasing their muscle mass faster than the people who were just consuming only the egg whites. So there's there's a lot of interesting kind of like information behind it, but it, it is something that I think deserves to be on that list high up there. Interesting. Yeah, for sure. Um, so that's kind of through the proteins. And then, you know, I'm, I'm kind of cutting some corners here instead of the top 10 foods. You know, I'm lumping berries all in together, right? And again, from a brain health standpoint, you know, blueberries are, are one of those, you know, they, they get touted as a superfood, right? But um, again, I am huge on these high volume, high antioxidant, highly nutrient dense foods, right? And, and berries fit directly into that, um, into that plan, right? So berries are one of these things you can eat a lot of. They're packed with fiber, they're packed with nutrients, they're packed with uh, really beneficial phytochemicals um, that, that you're not going to be able to get other places. So for that reason, you know, I'm huge with, uh, blueberries, blackberries, raspberries, especially for the fiber intake. Um, just, just for all the great benefits that they provide. And then, uh, number six would be beets. So this one, I think is a little bit, you know, people are, I don't know, I get a pushback on beets for some reason. <laughs> I, mean, I love beets. Beets are great. <laughs> the same man i eat a lot of beets i like them I, I enjoy the taste but also i understand the function of them so maybe that helps me uh to enjoy them a little bit more because i know that you know they're helping me out but just uh for the natural ni uh, nitrate content right so obviously just to improve blood flow around the body improve the uh, our body's ability to move our blood move the oxygen around the body it's a great performance enhancer um as well for people in the gym right so a lot of times people are taking these pre-workouts like that you know they've they've got the nitric oxide in them and all that stuff and um again those pre-workouts always are a little bit sketchy in terms of you know what's actually in them what are they providing are they just loaded with caffeine and a bunch of other stimulants and potentially you know some banned substances and stuff depending on what you're buying um because people are looking for that pump and they're looking you know to 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 get the, those nitrates right so you can actually get this naturally through beets so I try to include a lot of beets in my diet. Uh, you can also do a beetroot powder or, you know, now they even make chews or, and, and things like that, that you can take about 30, 45 minutes before the gym and then get all of the, uh, you know, get all that pump you're looking for, but in a really nice natural way. Gotcha. Yep. And then uh, seven, I'm cutting corners again. I'm going cruciferous veggies. Um, 
so uh, cruciferous to me is one of those things like I, I'm going to, from here on out, it's like, I always like to recommend people get it daily a cruciferous a leafy green, and then a variety of different colors. Um, cruciferous just being that they're a really great source of fiber. Uh, again, these are these high volume foods. They're, they're, they're great for satiety, right? The more protein and the more fiber we can get in our diet, the better it's going to be for satiety. Um, so cruciferous are great for that, but also they uh, contain a compound called uh, sulforaphanes, right? And sulforaphanes are a compound that helps our body produce uh, glutathione, which is tabbed as like our master antioxidant, right? So it's something that's really great at fighting, you know, disease and just wear and tear and any kind of, you know, inflammation or, or, or anything um, that could potentially be causing troubles within the body. So uh, for that reason, I do love cruciferous veggies like broccoli, cauliflower, Brussels sprouts, things like that. Those are, are, are highly recommended on my list. Um, and then next would be the leafy greens, right? So again, just great way to get some extra nu- nutrition in. Again, super high volume, low calorie food. Get some fiber in there. Get a lot of these these uh, beneficial phytochemicals that are available. And um, also, leafy greens are packed with vitamins A, C, and K. Um, so again, you know, uh, it just is just going to help the body run smooth, help, help our, our metabolism run smooth, and um, just help our, our health in general. Um, and then the last two things on the list here are, uh, I'm going to get a little bit more into seeds. So I think seeds are one of those things where people um, don't eat a lot of seeds, honestly, right? Like, you know, a lot of people are doing a lot of nuts, a lot of peanuts, a lot of almonds, things like that, which are great, cashews, things like that. Um, but I do think there you could probably get a little bit more benefit from doing some extra seeds, right? So pumpkin seeds are a big one, um, just for the zinc and uh, magnesium. So magnesium is not really something I've touched on yet, but you, you can get that through a lot of vegetables and stuff as well. But it's just so influential in the body for nerve function, bone health, energy metabolism, brain health. I mean, I think it's responsible for over 300 different en- enzymatic processes within the body. Um, and magnesium is something that we lose rapidly if, if we're active, right? So the more you're sweating, the more you're moving your body, the more you're using your muscles and things like that, the more magnesium you're going to be burning through. Um, so I think it's super important that we get these magnesium rich foods in whenever we can. So I like to use pumpkin seeds, uh, for that reason. And also the, the zinc will really help with, uh, immune support and, and things like that. Right. And then, uh, the last thing would just be chia seeds. So chia seeds are just, again, super high fiber. Uh, they, they've got a good amount of protein in them. They're another great high volume food. Um, and they've also got ALA, right? So ALA is one of those omega-3 fatty acids. It helps contribute. Um, it's got to get converted a little bit. Obviously, you know, it's not the same as eating salmon. Um, there is an extra conversion process, but I think this is a really good additive. You know, this is something you throw into smoothies or, uh, you know, make a chia seed pudding or, you know, put on top of a salad or something like that. And it can be a really good high fiber, high protein, um, you know, get some ALA in there, way to uh, improve your nutrition. So those would kind of be my top 10 if I had if I had to pick I could keep going but yeah I mean I love that list I you know the first eight I had heard about and I'm glad that you emphasize those I definitely have not heard much about seeds I think that's really important to emphasize that you know seeds are not the same as nuts and there's a different nutrient you know variation with those so very interesting certainly a learning point for me I'm going to branch off and just ask you some general questions about nutrition that come up often. And I think that our listeners would like to hear number one, is it important to eat a balanced breakfast? Is this the most important meal of the day, which is what everyone says, what is an ideal breakfast? And finally, if so, what do you say to people who believe in like intermittent fasting? Yeah, great question. Yeah, it's so it's so loaded. And and you know, I mean, in the in the nutrition and just like medical field, there's so many like, well, it depends, right? Like, (laughs) it always depends. But no, I so I would say to give you like a quick and hard fast answer, like is breakfast the most important meal of the day? I would say no, you know, I don't think it's like, you know, how we all grew up to know, like, if you don't eat breakfast, your metabolism doesn't start and you're gonna, you know, everything is gonna go bad for the remainder of the day. Um, But at the at the same time, there's a lot of research now that's starting to pop up in terms of like appetite management and things like that with consuming foods earlier in the day, right? So fasting got super hot, super popular. I mean, it kind of, it really still is, but you know, maybe over the last, I don't know, seven, five to seven years, right? Um, and, and I think it's a tool for the right type of person, right? So if you're more sedentary um, and you do have a problem with overeating and over consuming foods, I don't think it's the worst thing. Um, to shorten your eating window, right? 
Uh, it, it's a really great way to just manage calorie intake. I also think it's a really great way to understand for people that you don't necessarily need to eat every two to three hours. You, you're going to live, right? Like, I don't think anyone's going to die if they you know, wake up this morning and don't eat until noon. Um, so I think there's some some positives that you can take from there. But then also you want to make sure that that doesn't lead into like energy issues or the thing that I've seen most as like a nutrition coach is binge eating late at night. Um, and what it'll happen is it'll start a little bit of a cycle, right? So it'll be, okay, I don't eat until noon, one, two o'clock in the afternoon because I'm doing this shortened eating window. But then, you know, you say, say you start eating at 2 p.m. You have like a nice lunch. Maybe you get some chicken, some salad, some veggies in there, a little bit of carbohydrates. Everything's great. Everything's on track. You know, five o'clock, maybe you have something else. And then around eight, nine, 10 o'clock, you're starving and the floodgates open and you crush just a pile of food. You overeat, you kind of binge eat, you overdo it. You feel pretty gross going to bed. You wake up in the morning. You don't want to eat because of what you did the night before. And then you kind of use the fasting as a way to like, <laughs> you know, kind of counterbalance what you did the night before. But then the exact same thing happens on repeat. And we just get stuck in this brutal cycle where maybe we're not even controlling our calories that much anymore. Um, and we're just kind of doing ourselves a disservice because a lot of those like snack foods late at night and stuff aren't going to be the highest quality, right? So in terms of fasting, I would say it would be for a select group of people who really aren't doing a lot throughout the day, who are more sedentary and who are just really trying to control their, their calorie intake. And you just got to make sure it doesn't go out of control like that. Um, and, and I'll try to make this, I don't want to go too, too long on this answer, but in terms of breakfast, I think it is important. Like I'm big on, cause I'm, I'm more in like, I think everybody should be exercising, right? I, I hope you're the same, right? <laughs> I should be recommending that everybody I've seen you doing a thousand pull-ups a day in the office. I know you're into exercising. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but I, so I think from a standpoint is if we're going to be active and we're going to be moving throughout the day, we're going to be trying to get workouts in and things like that. We do want to be giving our body the energy it needs and also take advantage of muscle protein synthesis, right? So, Muscle protein synthesis, you'll get, you know, that's essentially just like the rebuild repair process of your muscles um, throughout the day. And it's, it usually lasts about four hours after a good solid protein feeding of about 30 or more grams of protein, right? Of a high quality, like bioavailable protein, like an animal based protein or a, a whey or plant protein shake or dairy or anything like that. Um, so the thing that I don't love, and especially like if you're working out in the morning, I don't recommend fasting. If you're working out later in the day, then you could probably get away with it, right? But the thing that I don't love is like, if you don't, let's just say you don't eat between the hours of 8 p.m. and noon, right? Um, the, the following day. So you eat that last meal at 8 p.m. Muscle protein synthesis will last until midnight. And then there's a 12 hour window where essentially you're not rebuilding, repairing, regenerating that muscle anymore, right? Now, if my goal is to build a lot of muscle, get very fit, improve on my metabolism, I don't know that I want a 12 hour break um, in, in terms of like building muscle, right? It would be like built like, you know, highway construction. It's like, would you rather them be working on, on the highway 24 hours a day or at least 16 to 18 hours a day? Or would you rather them have them working on it 12? You're going to want to have them working on it more often, right? And that's the way I kind of see, uh, you know, the opportunity for breakfast. So I won't necessarily recommend like a massive breakfast for everybody unless you are training, get your protein, get your carbs in. But if you're somebody who just works out later in the day, but you're trying to max out on muscle mass, I would go for like just a high protein, maybe maybe put some fats in there. Just make sure you get 30 to 50 grams of protein in your breakfast and call it good. Love that answer. That's That's exactly the way I approach it. This episode is brought to you by Vitamin Water. Vitamin Water contains the optimal blend of electrolytes, to fuel your day. So whether it's doing brain surgery or simply relaxing at the beach, vitamin water should be your source of hydration. Check out vitaminwater.com for more information and use promo code CROSSOVER for 20% off your first order. That's CROSSOVER for 20% off. And you know, something else you said early on, I want to go back to because it it's so important. Variety, enjoying your food, and don't starve yourself. So many people go into health, fitness, nutrition, and try to have like a single string bean during the day. Like explain why it's not about diet. It's really a lifestyle change in how you approach food. 
Yeah, I think that's the biggest thing. You know, I have this, I've had this conversation so many times recently, and um, I think it's just a product of uh, society right now, kind of where we're at and the way things are on like the social media world and whatnot. But I, we're, we're in a place now where I think people think that food equals fat. Like as soon as you eat something, it's just making you fat, right? Like there's something about it, that, like and and so many people are so worried to to overeat, right? And they're limiting their intake so much, and they're eliminating all, of, you know. Again, depending on who you're listening to, you're taking out fruit, you're taking out breads, you're taking out, you know, you're not eating after six p.m. Like there's just so many different things, right? And um, so many different messages out there, and I think it really is important to understand that, like. Honestly, through all of the studies, through all of the research and stuff that's been done, you know, the best diet, the the one that works best still to this day is the one that you can be the most consistent with, right? It, it's not the one that didn't eat bread. It's not the one that didn't eat fruit after four. It's not even, it's not the one that fasted half of the day, right? It's, it's the one, it's the people who are able to find a way to control their calories, um, eat adequate protein have obviously a balance between carbs and fats, just because it really, it doesn't even matter what you want to do with your carbs and fats. You just got to control your calories and keep your protein high. Um, and you can see a result that way. Right. So I do think we've got caught up in these tiny little like minutia type things that aren't near as, as important. And we get very down on ourselves about, you know, maybe you do go out tonight and have that piece of bread with dinner. That doesn't mean that you're completely like derailing your your approach here, right? Like we can't discount all of the great things that we're doing. So I think that's one huge issue is that people are just very, you know, I guess confused, I would say at this point in terms of like what is right, what is, you know, the, the best way to go about things or whatever. Um, and then, yeah, in terms of, you know, creating variety, I think that's the kind of the kicker in terms of like consistency, right? So it's like, I'm I'm huge on, understanding that there's two buckets like i like to take this two bucket approach to nutrition where we have the bucket of what we need right and obviously that's your lean proteins that's your everything we went down on on that list right the the top 10 lots of veggies get a lot of berries in there make sure we're consuming at you know good uh, quality carbohydrates you know lots of plant-based foods that type of thing um so we've got that bucket where we're going to take care of our nutrition needs All right. But then I do believe that we can have a bucket over here on the other side where we put some things in there that we like. Right. So if you do like to have that piece of bread with your dinner because it helps you stay adherent to all the other great things that you're doing throughout the day, plug that in. Right. If you like to have a little like, you know what, some chocolate or something at the end of the night. And again, you know, it's got to fit within your calorie uh, limitations and, and things like that. But if you like to have that and it helps you stay on track and eat really well, for the remainder of the day, then I don't believe that that's a problem, right? And I I don't think that's ever going to be the downfall of somebody's diet. I think the downfall is when we get overwhelmed by trying to take away everything. um, And we end up burning out, fizzling out and quitting and just kind of blowing it all up, right? So hopefully that answers your question a little bit. No, it does. And it also kind of points to the fact that people just say count calories. and, And the message I'm getting from you and what I've heard from other experts is, not all calories are created equal. Just kind of go into that a little bit. Yeah, no, absolutely not. Right. So, I mean, that's the thing, you know, you can look at 2000 calories worth of McDonald's and the effect that that would have on your body, or you can look at 2000 calories worth of, you know, again, all the stuff we're talking about, lean proteins, you know, high fiber, high nutrient density, high volume foods. Um, So there, there's going to be such a different impact. And again, there's research on that too, right? It's like, if you want to look at people who were fed, a, uh, you know, specific amount of calories from, you know, uh, more processed foods and junk foods and, and uh, just lower nutrient dense foods and that type of thing, as opposed to the ones who are fed with a high quality nutrient dense diet. Um, the people that are on the high quality nutrient dense diet actually do, you know, get better results from the diet that they're on, right? They're both at a, at a calorie restricted diet, but one's on, you know, processed food, one's on real food, the real food diet actually comes out uh, better in that case. So that's a pretty solid argument right there for not all calories being equal. And then also too, right? I mean, just in terms of like satiety and all that stuff, right? Like obviously the more processed uh, people's diets are, the the less um, satiety they have. So they'll find that they're dealing with a lot more hunger, a lot more cravings. Um, And like I said, in terms of adding more lean proteins and these highly nutrient dense foods, like our vegetables, our berries and things like that, these are also super high volume. So 
somebody might go from eating, you know, a couple small but very processed meals a day and hitting their 2000 calories to eating four pounds of food for 2000 calories and they can't even get there. Right. And, and, and that's going going to be the difference. And then you think of all the nutrients, all the nourishment, all the, you know, essentially support with your digestion, with your metabolism, with hormones, like you name it, everything, right. Sleep, immunity, brain function, all these different things. It's all going to make a massive impact. Right. So if I'm trying to eat, you know, 2000 calories worth of cookies in a day, like, okay, I, I could lose weight, right? People have done it. People have lost weight eating McDonald's every day for six months. But again, is that going to have the same impact in, on your health, on your energy levels, on your vitality, all that, all that stuff as you would get from eating the same amount of calories with high quality food, right? So I think it's just no comparison there, right? It's, it's night and day, two totally different things. Yeah, I mean, I totally agree. When I tell people, it's not how much you eat, it's what you eat. And I think that just like you said, you could have pounds and pounds of vegetables and lean protein. That's not going to make you obese. That's not going to get you out of shape. Meanwhile, if you have a little bit of junk food, that can certainly make you out of shape. And I want to jump into two things, actually three things that you mentioned before that is just rampant in this country, processed foods, sodium, and sugar. Why is it so important to avoid these three things? Yeah. Um, I'm just going to go right at the hyper palatability of them. They're just so easy to overeat. You know, uh, I think that's the problem. And again, you know, like they're, they've proven this with studies, right? You feed, you give people the ability to eat ad libitum, you give them a whole food based diet, or you give them a processed food diet, processed food based diet, the processed food diet, those people will over consume by about three to 500 more calories a day, as opposed to the people who are eating a whole food based diet. All right. So um, you know, that is, is massive right there. Right. And I just think when it comes to sugar, when it comes to, you know, again, these, these sugary, salty, fatty, overly processed, uh, you know, foods that lack any kind of nutrition and they lack the ability to create satiety within the body and make you feel full. Um, it, it just, it just lends itself to that hyper palatability. And, and we've all been there where you go into the pantry and you're like, Oh, I'm just going to have, uh, you know, my, I'll, I'll just full disclosure. My thing is I like to get into the chocolate chips every once in a while if my <laughs> wife buys them. So <laughs> not proud of it, but it is what it is. So it's, uh, you know, it's always, Hey, I'm going to have like one little handful of these chocolate chips. And then the next thing, you know, 10 minutes later, half the bag's gone and, and yeah. you don't even know what started it or what caused it. Cause your plan was only to have a little bit. Right. And when, when you flip that on its head and you give somebody lean proteins, you give them a lot of vegetables, you give them a lot of berries, even sweet potatoes and brown rice and things like that. No one's, no one's overeating that stuff. Right. Like you'll be sick of that before you know it, you know, and, and you'll feel good. You'll feel full. Um, as opposed to these processed foods that are high in, in, in salt, high in sugar, all these different things. Um, they just have a different effect on the body, right? Like they, they, they light up the brain, you know, they're, they're triggering a lot of different, um, I think, you know, hormonal things within the body as well. And they're just very, very hard to control. And the thing about it is it lead, it lends itself to a habit as well. That's the, the other thing is that usually when you start to do something like that and you start to, you know, like, it's like, oh man, I really enjoy eating those chocolate chips last night you're going to start doing that more often, right? And the body will ask for more of what you continue to give it. Um, and I think that's the slippery slope with that stuff, right? Where it's like, oh, I'll just have a little bit. And then that turns into a lot. And then you do the same thing the next night and the next night. And then all of a sudden, things just start to move in a really a wrong, a wrong direction. And I think it's literally all just, just based upon the hyper palatability. And just as human beings, we just do not have the ability to control our consumption of those foods. Um, and that's what's really getting in the way for a lot of people. Yeah, I've been there with that bag of chocolate. It's like just Pandora's box. <laughs> just, you have one Absolutely. of those. The next thing you know, you're like, what happened to the bag? It's gone. But yeah. anyway, that's so we've it. all been there. You know, what, what carbs are good for you? You know, carbs are another thing that have a tremendously bad rap right now. And there's good carbs and there's bad carbs. Kind of go over, not necessarily bad carbs, but what carbs should we be focusing on that are good and including in our diet? Yeah, totally. Uh, fiber dense, right? So I'm I'm huge on just like complex carbohydrates the majority of the time. The only time I'm going to really ever recommend like a simple carb 
or just like a starchy or sugary base with with very little fiber is like immediate pre-workout right so if you're within 60 minutes of heading to the gym and you need a fast bit of fuel that's where your your simple carbs your bit of sugars or your starches or whatever would come in um, but beyond that, I'm all about complex carbohydrate, right? So, I mean, the ones that I like to lean on most are uh, lentils. I love quinoa. I love brown rice. I'll do sweet potato, um, things like that. And then obviously a lot of, like I said, the berries and the veggies I've been harping on a lot. But um, I will do a lot of those type of things for carbohydrates as well um, because they are fiber dense. Um, and what they'll do is a couple things, right? So they're going to slow the digestion. They're going to help manage the blood sugar spike that you would potentially get from eating carbohydrate, right? With all the fiber, um, which is great. And they're great for gut health, right? So now, you know, with gut health being such a huge topic in, in the, you know, nutrition space and just the wellness industry in general, you know, there's a lot of people taking a lot of probiotics and a lot of people are avoiding carbs and stuff right now, but believe it or not, like fiber dense carbohydrates are the best way to populate your gut with healthy bacteria, right? So the more variety of different fibers you can get from plants, from berries, from fruits, from these complex carbohydrates, actually, the more you can populate, populate your gut with, uh, with quality bacteria, right? So um, that's the big reason I, I like to really aim for complex carbs. And then one little one little cheat code there too, if for people who are interested is um, if you are doing starchy carbs, what I recommend is to cook them first, cool them, and then you can reheat them and eat them. And what that'll do is that creates a resistant starch. So it almost creates like a little, like almost like a fiber, like it almost creates like, like a little bit of like a prebiotic, but your body won't digest that starch um, the same way as it would if you just cooked a, a, a potato or white rice and just ate it right away. Then you're going to digest all that starch. You're going to get the blood sugar reaction, um, that type of thing from it. Now, if you cook it, cool it, you can even reheat it again. It's going to keep that resistant starch. So you're just not going to digest as many of those calories from that starch and it's going to help manage the blood sugar. So it's almost going to create like a little bit of a, a, a fiber in there for you. So you left off one that that I'm obsessed with. and I want to get your your opinion on a simple baked potato. I, I didn't hear that as a good carb and I'm a little upset. <laughs> no, I, I'm all for I'm all for a baked potato. I, I eat a lot of them, and yeah, I mean, obviously the potassium is a big one, right? It's great to get that in, especially when you're training uh, frequently. But no, I'm I'm totally cool with the like with a white potato with white rice and stuff. But like I said, I I would probably recommend if you wanted to get like the that extra benefit from it, cook it, cool it, then reheat it, um, so that you get all those resistant starches along with, you know, all the energy and everything that you would get from a, a potato and all the nutrients. All right. So last question, because I know you're running short on time, single most important piece of advice you would give someone trying to eat healthy. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's a tough one. Um, no, I'm going to say start small. Um, I, the the biggest thing I see is everybody wants to start, I'm going to eliminate everything, right? I'm going to not eat this anymore. I'm not going to eat that anymore. I'm going to cut out my top five favorite foods that I, that I love. And I'm only going to eat chicken and salads for the rest of my life, right? And then they start that on Monday. And then by Wednesday, they're back in the cup. They're, they're having a meltdown, right? So I would say like the big thing is understand the foods that are going to fuel your body best, right? And that's everything that we've been talking about for the last 35 minutes here, right? That's our, our lean proteins, that's our veggies, that's our berries, that's our high fiber, high nutrient dense, high volume foods, right? And essentially what I would do is I would start there and I would consume literally as much of those things as I possibly could and watch it push all that other shit out, you know? Because that's what it's going to do. You're going to have so much satiety. You're going to have so much appetite control, you're going to feel great. Your energy levels are going to be up. You're not going to be hitting these afternoon lows and, and needing all these coffees and sugar and all this junk to um, essentially kind of spark you back up for the second half of the day. Um, and you're also not going to have to take um, a restrictive approach to dieting. You can actually take an additive approach, but we're just trying to add the right stuff. So the more of these things that I add, I'm going to have a lot less room in my belly for the sugar, for the snacks, for the treats, for the processed foods. And I think if, if we could kind of take a reverse approach on that, because like I said right now, everybody just thinks, hey, what what's everything I got to take away? It's like, uh, let's actually start by adding everything you need to add and then see where that leaves you at the end of the day, right? Um, I would really start there for anybody who's who, who's trying to make like significant changes. 
and just, you know, be patient. Uh, you know, eating is an everyday thing that you're going to do for the rest of your life, you know, three to five times a day forever. So, um, you know, it's one of those things where people get very caught up in like, oh, well, that was, I had a bad dinner. So I just screwed everything up. It's like, listen, you, next one's coming around in a few hours. Like, don't worry about it. Right. Like kind of brush it off, make sure you're taking care of like the ones you can control and, and do, you know, kind of do your a better job next time. And I think, that would be the two things, right? So start by thinking about everything you could add as opposed as opposed to everything you have to take away. Um, and then have a little bit of empathy with yourself. Understand that just like life in general, you know, not every day is going to be a great day. We don't all show up at work every day and have, uh, you know, gold star performance, but we don't quit our job on the way out that night. You know, we just kind of dust ourselves off and get mentally prepared to have a better day the following day. And I think, you know, if people could do those two things with their nutrition, um, it could be uh, very impactful for them. What a great interview, Adam. I, I would say that, you know, I, I'm big into wellness and nutrition. So a lot of what you said, I was already aware of. But I think the glaring problem in this country is people just don't understand nutrition. There's no basic education. Yeah. People may want to eat better. They may want to lose weight. They may want to get more in shape. They just don't know how. Yep. They, they just don't understand simple nutrition. So I think knowledge is power. This interview has been terrific. Hopefully our listeners can be educated about the simple, basic nutritional facts that you pointed out. And I don't think you can make a change and eat better if you don't understand nutrition. So thanks for going over the basics. I think it's a great foundation for anyone trying to eat healthy. Absolutely. No, thank you for having me on, Dr. Komatar. And I, I couldn't agree more. You know, knowledge is power. And that's what we're we're lacking in, you know, in, in our society is just an understanding of what are going to be those biggest bang for your buck kind of things that we can do, right? So yeah, I appreciate you having me on. Hopefully this word will spread here and, and people can get on top of it. Um, you know, and if, if anybody needs, you know, just reach out to, to me through social media or whatever. And, and I'm more than happy to answer any questions or try to guide or direct people in a way that I can. Um, any way I can be helpful. Yeah. So, so for all our listeners, please check out AR Nutrition. That's Adam's company. Unbelievable. It's a great resource. Adam, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you.